excited. So thank you so much for hopping on, Denise. I know, um, you know, you're super busy, but we are just honored to have you on here. And um, I am so excited. I just got your book yesterday and or your journal and um i wanted you know there, we have a lot of new people on and i kind of want you to share a little bit about you know your journey into into this career um and and then we can kind of go into the book too um and how the inspiration came about because i'm sure it kind of all started a long time ago it did it has evolved that is for sure um, well, thank you so much, Kelsey, for inviting me. We got to know each other at the Grand Rapids Boot Camp. Um, we were on a panel together, and I was like, oh, my gosh, we totally need to be friends. <laughs> um, so you guys are in good hands with this girl, that's for sure. Um, but I've been doing this business for almost 12 years. It's pretty crazy. I started back in 2007. And so in, in April of next year, it'll be 12 years. And I was a clinical psychologist. So I was 24 years old. I had got my master's from clinic, in clinical psychology. I got my first job at a local community mental health. Uh, I, so I was a clinical psychologist. I saw clients, like I had about 80 clients. I had individuals and families and I led groups. I led about eight groups, anger management, depression group, uh, one for bipolar, one for schizophrenia. I used to see clients at the jail. I dealt with substance abuse issues. And I thought that was where I would best serve the world. You know, when you are have a big heart and you're like, want uh, I, I think I got that bug for mission trips as a kid. And then I worked in camps for a few summers and I was like, this is so fun. Helping people grow is so fun. So I thought that psychology was my way to do that. Um, but I really quickly went through my quarter life crisis, you know, where I was like, I'm going to change the world. And then I was like, no, I'm not, <laughs> not here. This is, this is crazy. <laughs> I don't want to be here for the next 30 years. You know, I was, it was overwhelming. It was a lot of uh, stuff. I mean, I took mental health days for my own mental health and Brandon was an aerospace engineer. So it sounds cool, but he was bored out of his mind. So we had like good jobs. We had quote unquote good jobs. Although I will stay, say as a master's level clinical psychologist, my starting salary was like $34,000 a year. So we had good jobs, but it didn't mean that the income was worth the stress I was under. Um, but so I, I got restless, you know, I don't know if any of you have, I think a lot of times we ch choose this business or we try, we find this when we're in a transition point, when we're ready for something new. And, and I had been ready for something new for quite a while. So I spent a few years restless knowing that I couldn't be in this job, J-O-B, like overworked, underpaid, stressed to the max, and literally spinning my wheels um, forever. But I didn't know what else to do. And so I think a lot of times we stay there for 30 years and we hate it and we still stay there because we don't know what else to do. So, so that's where I was. I didn't know what else to do, but I knew I couldn't be here anymore. And Brandon um, started, like, actually we met Cami in our small group at church and Brandon was playing basketball with Mark at the church basketball league and things like that. And, uh, I started off as a customer. So two weeks or I signed up as a customer. And within those two weeks, Brandon saw me using the products. He, he realized that if we were ever going to do a company like this to kind of know the CEO and know their families and trust them and know, you know, all of that was, we're like, all right, let's do it. So we jumped in and honestly, I had no idea what I was doing. I had been in school for six years and I was like helping people. I went, I said to Brandon, should I go back to school to, for business? Like, I don't know sales. I don't know marketing. Um, and he said, no, don't do that. That's a waste of money. So I just really had to get boots on the ground and figure it out. And so I remember, I mean, I, I started at my leadership level would probably be a two, you know, I was, and I grew in this business. And within one year we uh, branded or we were, went diamond. And then in the second year we went double and the third year we went triple and the fourth year we went presidential and the fifth year we went ambassador and eight years in, we went black diamond. Now, if you had, and then, now it's been 12. We went Black Diamond in 2015. It's pretty crazy, but. Yeah, if, and just for those of you guys yes, who are good point. and they don't know what a Black Diamond is, a Black Diamond means that you make $100,000 a month 
with a company for at least six months in a row. And, um, you know, that is like a crazy amount of money. Um, I know that like when I was younger and I was thinking, what's successful? I always thought a hundred thousand dollars a year. It's like a successful job. Like, and then, you know, like mind blown when you think about a hundred thousand dollars a month. Um, but you know, I can relate to almost every part of your story. Cause I feel like, you know, the quarter life crisis is really when you look around and you're like, is this going to be me for the rest of my life? Like, I remember feeling like that at my bank job and seeing these old women counting down the days to retirement. And I was like, yeah, no, that can't be me. That can't be the foreshadowing of my life. No, <laughs> um, so. Not when you've, not when your fire's been lit, like not when yeah. you've experienced excitement and you're like, no, I know what it's like to live in my passions. And I know what it's like to like, love what I'm doing. Yeah. So so true. Cry so, on your way to work. I'm yeah. Not. And so, you know, the, when you say you went, you know, I think a year doesn't sound like a lot when we know that you're, we know kind of what your result is now, but when you're in and you're sitting in like that year, it feels like a long time, right? People give up after two days in this business sometimes, but you know, and then you taking three years from ambassador to black diamond too. Like, can you just kind of talk about, I mean, I'm sure you're going to, but um, that's definitely something that, that I'm interested to know about. Yes, for sure. So you're right. Now, I do need you to know that in 2007, 2008, there were hardly any diamonds, like period. So Cami was diamond when I signed up. Melody went ambassador at some point in the first few years, but there was like n nobody doing it. So I didn't have the people to compare myself to. I wasn't like, Oh man, if only, you know, because we were like, can we go diamond? I hope so. Let's go for it. You know? And, and I think my hardest step within that year was going Ruby to Emerald because Ruby, I, you, you can do Ruby yourself, but Emerald, you kind of have to have people duplicating you. You have to kind of have people on your team that are excited just like you are. And so Ruby to Emerald, I remember just being like, if it really weren't for Cammy asking me, are you coming to the meeting? Are you going to be on the call? Are you like lovingly stalking me? I probably would have easily snuck away. It was the community in those early years that made me feel like I would be missed when I didn't show up. There's YouTube videos of me that have like 30,000 some views or whatever. I don't know. I haven't looked recently, but I'm wearing normal clothes because I just came from work and I didn't, we didn't really have it works clothes and I forgot it at home and what do you do? But like I showed up and I think that because of the community and because I showed up, I learned the skills and I grew in my belief because my mom was a stay at home mom. My dad was an accountant. <laughs> I was not like, learn. I did not learn entrepreneurship. I did not learn risk taking. I did not learn any of these skills. So I really had to develop them. And I think I developed them by showing up and staying plugged into the community. So when we did go diamond, we were like, oh my gosh, we were diamond. This works. We have to tell everyone. <laughs> and then again, I think diamond to double should be pretty easy. Like it's still only two strong legs, but we didn't, another thing like this is so old school, but like we didn't have the ability to place. Like we had to have everybody on our top line because it wasn't a part of system to place distributors. We finally were like, Mark, it doesn't make sense for us to keep these people on the top line. And we would call customer service every time we wanted to move people. Anyway, you're welcome for all of that pioneering. It's hilarious. <laughs> it's like you're showing your age. You know, when people are like, when people are like, oh yeah, I remember that song or show or person. I know. And then you're we like, we used to use MapQuest to go to parties. Goodness <laughs> sake. <laughs> I tell people, I'm like, when I joined, we didn't have the ability to copy and paste. <laughs> like, and that was not even four years ago, but like, I literally remember being at my job and like typing out, like I would be having my phone, like lifted up and typing out on my computer in my email drafts, like somebody else's, like we didn't have the ability to just hold it down and copy. Oh, to it. That's so funny. Things change so fast, which is good. It, it's exploded yeah. our business, but it is yeah. funny to look back. We didn't have blitz cards. We really just got the wrap on people and we walked around and we're like, do you want to try wrap? <laughs> so we led with the wrap. We got the wrap on people and slowly but surely things started to grow. Um, but that's the cool part is that you learn every step and you can earn an income while you're growing, which is really helpful. Yeah. Yeah. So I love that. And I love, you know, just, um, 
kind of knowing that we see you now as like kind of a, a not a finished product, but somebody who's who's you know made it for a lot of people. And obviously, you know that um, that's been a journey for you, which has probably been part of the reason why you know you wanted to to write the book and so in the journal. Um, and I think you know, we all love hearing these stories and, and hearing and get inspired by it because we get to see, oh, that's how she did it. Right. But yeah. what you've done is made this awesome tool to be like, okay, yeah, that's how she did it. But here's how you can actually do it yourself. Yeah. Um, the day to day thing. And so kind of talk about like maybe, you know, your journey through this dream journal almost, if that makes sense. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay. So I've got two quick stories for you. One is about the journey to Black Diamond. And then the other one is about the journey for the workbook and the book. There's several things coming out, um, but I've had to redo them. I have had to cry a lot. I've had to like, and so people see that you're right. They see the stage, but they don't see that we ate crackers in our closet for three months. <laughs> you, know? you don't often see the grit that goes into it. And um, so the Black Diamond story, have you heard this story before, Kelsey? Um, like with the room, was it with like the war room? That was year three. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Part of it was, yeah. So that's the part that I've heard, but I haven't heard the full okay. story. Okay. So the first year of Black Diamond, so it took us three years of like going for it to actually hit it, which I mean, I'll just keep telling you the story. I, I know that three years isn't that long of a time, but you know, when you're yeah. fighting for something, right? So the we're first in the year, middle of it. but my question is, is during that time, this is what I want to know. During that time, did you say this year we're going black diamond? Like, did you have like a deadline that you kept setting and having to like adjust, not the goal, but the timeline and adjust the timeline? Like, did you have that? Or was it just kind of like, okay, we're going to start working on it and it takes as long as it takes. Oh no. Yeah. So the first year I thought it was in the bag. Um, I thought we had it. Our top spot at one point during the first year, this was 2013, was 140. Like who drops 40 grand in two months? Apparently you can, just so you know. Um, and so I thought it was in the bag. And so I really did. My head was like, we're going black diamond, whoop, whoop. And I, and I thought we had it. But what happened was that my, um, I started thinking 98, 98, 98, 98, 98, 98, 98, 98. And I hadn't learned all of these skills yet. And so I was, I was not taking my thought captive. I was not retraining my brain. I was not focusing on my personal vision. I was just like, that would be so funny if... If it was 98, that would be so funny if we lost it by just a few thousand dollars. Wouldn't that be so funny? Like I entertained it. You know what I mean? So Pam calls me the first day of the next month, month five, like we were she month five checks and she goes, Denise, you didn't make it. And I was like, she goes, it was 97. And I ran back to my computer and I counted up all my fast starts. <laughs> And, uh, and it ended up being like 98. And I said, Pam, I, uh, I've been thinking 98 all month long. And she said, Denise, you did it to yourself. And I was like, oh, what the freaking heck? Like, uh, you become what you think about, even if it's not what you want. <laughs> so then I got salty. I don't know if any of you have ever hit, like worked for a goal and then didn't hit it. But then I was like, we're going black diamond. Yeah, right. You know what I mean? I was like, mm -hmm, we'll see if that happens. Like, Phew. so I was saying all the right things, but my heart didn't really believe it. And honestly, I didn't want to put my like full self in because what if it didn't happen again? How embarrassing would that be? So the second year, 2014, we got three months in and then or three or four, I'm, I should count it up. I forget now, but it, a few months. And then when we lost it, I was like, told you. And what I realized throughout, of course, afterwards is that uh, you, you can't create when your head and your heart are not connected. When you say you want something, but you don't fully believe it, it doesn't happen. So 2015 came and we, we I knew we had to do something different. They came out with 2.0 and I was like, all right, if you want something different, you have to do something different. And a couple things happened this year. First of all, number one, 2.0 gave me a clear focus period. That's it. 
a new team to build and it was up to me because you can only care so much about someone else's organization. I can't build someone to triple diamond. You know what I mean? But I'll freaking build myself. So, <laughs> so we got to 2.0 to triple diamond in one year because that gave me a clear focus. Um, the second thing that happened was we planned a, every August, we do a leadership retreat for Willow Creek. And then this year we happened to Again, I don't think it was an accident. We happened to plan the Come As You Will Be party in Grand Rapids, Michigan, 2015. It was at our zoo in, a, in what's called the Treehouse. No, that's not. Yeah, it's called the Treehouse. And so it, you like go up and it's in the trees of the zoo. And so I had binoculars made that said, where there's no vision, the people perish. Cute vision. I thought I was very proud of myself. And, and then so, um, we all came. Explain, like the Come As You Be, like. Like I, yeah. I, mean, I know, but I know a lot of people might not. Yeah. So you, you come dressed. So this was 2000, it was 2015. We pretended like it was 2025. So 10 years. And we all dressed as if we were that person. I still have my stuff. Brandon made me a little thing that said, I came home from a Ted talk that went viral. I had a business card that said it works first triple black diamond as seen on Oprah's favorite things and American Ninja warrior. And this is before I did the bodybuilding show. You know what I mean? Like, ah. and then, um, so we came and we talked about this, uh, like we talked about what we were experiencing. People came with their dream houses on their phones, talking about how they just moved in. Um, Nikki Moore came with like babies tied to her hips and since she's adopted to like so many cool things have happened since that party. But part of why that's important is because I had to prep people for the party. People were, I mean, my team was like, Denise, I don't even want to know what I want to do next week. How am I going to know what I want to do in 10 years? So we did Zooms just like this. And we would do 30 things I want to be, 30 things I want to do, 30 things I want to have. We would talk about your ideal day, your dream day. We like really just allowed people to have that space to say, if you could do anything, what would it be? What comes naturally to you? What is your life purpose statement? What brings you joy? You know, all of those things started to bubble up, which meant it bubbled up for me. And I had to be super clear because I was helping them get super clear. So we go to this party. And again, this just mind blows me. We were at the party with all of our leaders and Cami and like Amber Parker came in from Utah and like all these people. And I get a text from Mark and he says, Denise, you got month five. We're at the party at the party. So I was like, got the microphone. And I said, this is real time right now. 2015, not 2025 anymore. Just for one second. We got month five and we all celebrated and everyone said, you know, don't, you can't let month six pass you by. Right. Of course. So on um, that month, the, so, so prior to the come as you will be party and prior to getting that text, I had been thinking 78, 78, 78, 78, 78, 78, 78, 78. 78, 78. And I, um, during that time, I was listening to The Strangest Secret by Earl Nightingale, like almost every day. Um, I was doing a lot of personal development. I hadn't yet learned about Dr. Leaf, but when I did, I like, it was, um, if you haven't heard of Dr. Leaf, look her up. She's all about retraining your brain. And she was one that like made it all make sense for me. But so I was listening to The Strangest Secret. And when these fear thoughts would come up, it would say, 78, 78, 78. I would retrain my focus and say 103, 103, 103, 103, 103. But this time, instead of just retraining my thoughts and my focus, I also retrained my emotions. You know, my head and my heart had to be connected. So when we were at the, yes, Dr. Leaf and her book is called like The Broken Brain. She's a neuroscientist and I don't, what is she? She's like, um, that's, I think that's almost true. Let me see. What is switch on your brain, switch on your brain, switch off your brain, something like that. That's the name of the book. But what she, she does brain studies and she has seen you people create new neural pathways based on their thought patterns and like turn genes on and off and stuff like that. It's really crazy. So, um, so we're at the party. I mark tells me I had been doing this 103, 103, 103 stuff. And so I get back home, checks are posted a few days later, and it was 1025. So I was like, oh my God, that is very close. 
And you do think of dream a little bigger. <laughs> yes. Yeah, switch on your brain. Dr. Caroline Leaf. Seriously the best. And so then I went to 113, 113, 113. And anytime the fear came up because it still did, I still had thoughts of what if, what if, what if, all that junk. And I'm sharing this because this is the junk, the fear, those negative thinking. That's just a part of the game. And what I realize is they don't mean anything. They don't. They mean nothing. They mean only what we give it. So during that season, I was still having that st thought, those thoughts, but I would go 113, 113, 113, 113, 113. This is when power hours were born because we were like, we don't need training. We just need to freaking work. So we would do power hours Monday through Thursday with, you know, two to 500 people on from eight to 10 at night. There was so much energy. People were so excited working towards not only my promotion or because really what I just need volume and cabs, but <laughs> you can't really chart it. Um, but they knew that if they hit their promotions, that would help us. And people were having dreams that we ran for president. And I would get calls like, oh my gosh, I had a dream you made 136,000 this month. And I was like, sweet, you know, and I don't know. And so it reminded me of Finding Nemo when they're in the net and they're like, everybody swim down. Like everybody together is creating this force. And that is what it felt like when we were working together because we were all so excited about the goal. So I wore Cammie's black diamond jacket during all of these Zooms. I talked about it like it was in, like it was happening. But in this year, my head and my heart connected because anytime the fear creeped in and, and I would go like, 113, 113, 113, 113, 113. And I allowed it to embody me. Now, did I know if it was going to happen? No, I didn't. But at that point, like, all I could do was embody it and become it. And so that month, um, it ended up being 131. And what's so, again, super amazingly cool is that that was August of 2015. I randomly had a vacation plan the first week of September. <laughs> so like we found out we went black diamond, we went on vacation for a week and it was like the best ever. But when I look back at that experience, because you don't really know what you've learned until you reflect and you go, all right, what, what was it that unlocked this for us? What was it? What was the difference? Because all of those years I was doing the things I was following up. I was going to, I mean, I was like an event planner for years, planning one team, one missions all over the world, traveling and do, I mean, I was like doing all the stuff, but the 2015 was the year that it really clicked. And the reason I believe it really clicked was because my head and my heart were connected. So what happens when you experience success is everybody then always asks, what did you do? What did you do? Tell me how to do it. What do you do? And I was like, um, I worked really hard. I don't really know. <laughs> so I kind of had to reverse engineer it. And, and this so 2015, we went black diamond 2016. I did the bodybuilding show and I did the Jack Canfield train the trainer program, which is where I got to go um, and hang out with Jack for two weeks. He wrote chicken soup for the soul and success principles. I got to speak in front of him. I, I you know, I just I have like a binder full of exercises and things that we can do at trainings and stuff like that. Um, and then in 2017, I wrote, I was like, I need to get all of this out of me, you know, all of this stuff out of me so that it can help more than just my team. And so that it can help me. I mean, it's, it was like, how can I add more value and still pick my kids up from school? You know, that was kind of where I was at. Like, you feel like you've learned all this stuff and you've got so much to give and share, but yet I also want to pick my kids up from school. So that's why I started the podcast. And that is when I started writing and kind of getting all of this stuff out. And honestly, I thought that this would be out last year at this time. Like it's in my head, it was a year behind. Um, and what happened was I, I got it to the editor, the editor got it to the designer, the designer, uh, the podcast is called Dreamcast. It's on all, all major podcast players. <laughs> um, Dreamcast. And it is, so I'm sharing this part of the story because again, people can think it's easy. You know, I think, I think you can, that's why I want to share the story because it wasn't easy and I wanted to give up a lot. Um, whew. But so what happened was I got it to the designer and the designer took until May. And when we got it back, we realized it was too big to print and we had to redo it all. 
and it made me really sad. So I'll show it to you. Like, it's beautiful. I told him I wanted to be flat. I want, want it to be easy to write in. It's exercises. It combines science, scripture, and stories to take you from where you are to where you want to be. This is the workbook, not the journal. But it's like so big, so big, and too much white space, and you like can't take it to a coffee shop. <sighs> and it's too expensive to print because it's color. If you ever want to write a book, I know a lot about it now. <laughs> um, and so with that being said, two things happened this past year. I was mad. I was mad. And, and so again, I said what I wanted, but my emotions were tied to being frustrated and angry and all of that. And it wasn't like until I cut my emotional ties, which is a whole nother thing, uh, that I could then begin to create. And within like two weeks of doing that, of really like releasing the frustration, I was connected with a group that have been in the publishing industry for over a decade and we are redoing the workbook and we redid this in a month. I know, it's crazy. So I, you know, the journal we did first because it's the easiest in my mind. I was like, when you know what you want and cause that's all about breaking through and getting clear and it's like the whole shebang. Once you know what you want, you need to do something every day. And that's where the journal came in. Um, and so I'm like, man, I should have forgiven you a long time ago. <laughs> but it's just really kind of cool how uh, sudden lace can happen. Suddenly in your business. Yeah. Suddenly you can have a ruby in a weekend. Suddenly the right person shows up in your path. Suddenly, right when you least expect it. Um, but for me, it happens that way when, when my head and my heart are connected and I'm free from the emotional strings that can keep us back. Yeah. I have a couple of questions, you know, as I was listening to you talk and I'm like, okay, you're like, yeah, that makes, that makes so much sense. Um, <clears throat> when you are trying to connect your head and your heart or you're trying to grow maybe one or the other, like sometimes I think people have like, a, like they, their heart is bigger and more expanded than their head. And then some people it's the opposite. Their head is bigger than their heart. Right. And so is, are these separate growth things that you did almost individually or was it like a total like learned connectedness, like all together? You, does that make sense? I don't know if I'm asking the question to where it makes sense. Yeah. Well, I, you can think about creating a dream board, right? And you write your list or you create a dream board. And if you look at it and go, yeah, right. Then part of me says, change your dream board, change your dream board to align with your current set of beliefs. You know, if you, you we can't necessarily go from a zero to a 10 because we don't believe that we can, but we can go from a zero to a three. We believe that. And then slowly but surely we work our way up. So I think sometimes self-sabotage happens when we have these big dreams, but we don't believe it. So if, that, if that's the case, it's okay to say, all right, let's start a bit smaller. Like, sure, ambassador, but like, let's call your mom first. <laughs> <laughs> and like start like start where you are so you build the confidence every step of the way. I mean, I didn't have ambassador on my dream board. I didn't understand that for a while. So I had to start where I was and then hit that goal, understand it, go again, you know what I mean, and kind of grow throughout the journey. Uh, no, that makes total sense. And for you, do you feel like which part was harder for you? Well, what was the hardest part, I guess, about the heart and what was the hardest part yeah. of your head? Yeah. See, you know, I'm trying to, I feel like they, um, they grew similarly, but I think I didn't know it was possible until I knew it was possible. You know, mm -hmm. I didn't know you could earn a hundred thousand dollars a month until I knew you could. So I had to be around it for a while to like, before I could grow a brain cell, they say, um, what it, oh, what is it called? Like you, mm, I forgot what I'm basically like you be, you have to go be around the people you want to be like, right? Because that is how you see what's really possible, mm -hmm. which is one reason why we get to events and stuff. So I had to learn it before I could believe it. Um, 
So, but I remember being, oh, this is another part of the Black Diamond story. I remember being there and being like, Steph, can you believe we're here? And she's like, yeah, <laughs> totally can. Yeah. I'm like, oh, me too. <laughs> Um, but what happened at the black diamond event? So we flew in a private plane to Florida. We got a $5,000 shopping spree, which I did not share with Brandon. <laughs> it had my name on it and they went to the ranch. So we were like, woo. -hoo. And we went and around St. Armand circle. We, um, we did all the shopping with Cindy and Pam and Stephanie and they're super hip. So I was very grateful to, and, um, I felt guilty. So I was at the Black Diamond event feeling success guilt because I was like, there are so many people who are amazing at this business. There is a lot of people working their butts off. There's a lot of people with good things to share. Like, why did we get this, you know? And so I remember just like having these thoughts, like, are people throwing tomatoes at us through Facebook right now? Like, are people mad? Do they think we don't deserve it? You know, I was like having all, I'm like being massaged in our room, having these thoughts. It was really not awesome. I'm like, stop it. But what happened, so I told Brandon and he was like, you're silly. And I, so I went for a run and I listened to The Strangest Secret. And again, The Strangest Secret says you become what you think about. So I was like, all right, what do I want to feel right now? How do I want to feel? I want to be fully present. I want to fully immerse what's going on. I want to fully be here and grateful. And I like, you know, I'm like wrestling with myself through this run. Like, like just don't even go there right now. Just stay here. Like regardless of earned or not earned, this is, you're here and whatever. And so, uh, so I get back from the run and I'm stretching and one of my girls would went diamond the night before she texted me. And the cool part about this story is she works third shift and she woke up from a sleep to text me immediately after my run. Like she didn't know, you know, she just texted me and she said, Denise, my life has been changed because of this business. And if I don't make any more money, like, thank you. We found God here. My family's better now. Like, like we are blessed because of this business. And I got back from my run and like listening to the strangest secret and being like, all right, what is it that I want to feel right now? What do I want to think? How do I want to be like, and I got that instant God wink, right? Like, this is what you're supposed to do. Like you, you are adding value. This is where like you are shining here. Like this is what you're supposed to do. And you get to go on private planes to private islands, <laughs> do very crazy fun stuff. And it was just like, goodness sakes, when you can make this business go from a career to a calling, your feet are planted because you know that you know that you know that your gifts and skills are being used to bless the world. So good. It's so true. And I think um, somebody said something to me like going along those lines and I use it all the time now. And, and I was, I don't remember, I was complaining about something or whatever. And they were like, don't curse what you prayed for. Yeah. And I was like, dang, like how many times are we like, God, we have to clean this house. Oh, the house that you prayed for or, oh, you know, like oh, my kids are being so obnoxious. Oh, the kids that you prayed for and you're so blessed. You know what I mean? And sometimes like that just helps me put it into perspective. Um, and I think, you know, it can happen to all of us when we do. And I mean, anybody um, who grows in this business, I think, some people, like Pam says, don't have a brain cell for it. And it's easy to slip into that guilt um, of success. And so um, my question is, is when you were like corralling your team and you were like, let's freaking go Black Diamond. How did you do that without feeling like that's selfish? Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Like, how did you present it without being like, do this for me mm -hmm. and, and not be like, Hey, let's do it together as a team. And, and what did that kind of look like when you were communicating that to them? So part of the things that we did during that season was I did an advanced compensation plan webinar every month. I was talking about how like, I feel, I feel like my part of my job is to flip the switch for them where they say, I can do this because I didn't know I could do this until I was like, Oh my gosh, I'm good at this. Oh, cool. They worked, you know? And so I have to like 
give those types of experiences to the team. So I did a lot of vision casting. I, I wrote in the ambassador group probably a year ago now. I was like, I did not get to Black Diamond because I really um, do awesome parties. I feel like I got to Black Diamond because I cast vision, you know? And so I casted vision for them through compensation plan trainings. Do you know what you have your hands on right now? This, you know, you're the first person in your area. You are X, Y, and Z. Like you are going to, you know, the double, the good bonuses are happening or whatever's happening. I was casting vision for them to flip the switch for them. And then I know that my check will grow when I'm working within my coding legs, right? So I'm like lovingly stalking and in their charts, like it's my job. And I'm with them holding hands, you know, we're all over the world, but we're like talking every day. I'm signing people, they're signing people. We're working together to make it happen, to create momentum in, in, like in my triple spot, like my new spot went triple that one year. So we were really focused on just three key leaders that we could really grow and help to get to triple that one year. And, and you have to stay focused in one direction for a period of time for you to see results and, and see that momentum. So I, I didn't talk a ton about my own promotion, to be honest. Like the money side of it is not something that I really thought about too much. It was really more about hitting a goal and, and getting as many people to hit their goals as possible. Yeah. Um, and I do think that that's like a big thing. Like I don't, I mean, I'm just as guilty as like not knowing exactly what you have your hands on and just being like, yeah, okay. They just talk about the steps. So I'm just gonna, you know, do this every month and make a lot of money. And so, um, understanding like the, the compensation is, I think definitely something that at every level you can get better at. And, um, for you, like, that is such a cool tool to have in your back pocket and anybody can have it. You know, it's not something you just uniquely have, but you've spent the time and you've taken the time to study it and really understand it. And so I think, you know, in that position, knowledge is power and understanding that and being able to teach that too. So um, that that's definitely like a really good tip for anybody who's like, I just, I need to make a hundred, I need to make $500, you know, it is Ruby, but that's an average. You know, so how can we really teach you how to understand where that $500 is truly coming from? So nobody's right. complaining about their checks. Right. Because you can, I mean, I was making 30 grand a month at triple. Yeah. So Pam, insider scoops, like this is not stuff we say from stage, but Pam would <laughs> say things like, Denise, your check is so high and your volume is so low. <laughs> 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 But I think the reason is, so we quit our jobs. We went to Australia. Um, we came back. And when we were triple, Brandon was my double. And I had two diamonds, you know, a diamond, like, so three diamonds, a diamond under him, two diamonds up top. And, and we had done a lot of that work. And when I came back from Australia, my leaders were kind of gone. Like one had cancer, one went through a divorce, one kind of floated away. And I had to say, all right, well, Let's do it again. And my volume didn't drop like in a month, but, but I had to say, all right, I, I need new, like if I, what kept me going? So the next round of people I signed up, I worked really hard to build community and to pave the leadership development. Like that's when I started doing leadership calls with just my top line to create community with just them. And then I'd say, what's going on with your team? Because I wanted them to know. I didn't want to be the leader for everyone. I wanted to train them to be the leader. Um, so things, we just kind of shifted things. And, and, and honestly, my friend signed up when we quit our jobs. Nikki Moore is our cousin. She signed up. Amanda Casanova is our cousin. She signed up. My sister signed up after we went ambassador. And so they were our friends and we were able to run really hard with them. And they were the ones that gave me coding. So at the end of the day, it ended up being a blessing that some of my non-coded friends left and I had full focus and ability to hang out with my triple and above, uh, above coded team. So yeah. If, you've, uh, if you've, yeah, if you've lost any team members, the cool thing is, is that everyone you sign up from now on is if you're diamond and above coded to you and that ends up being a blessing. Yeah. Yeah. I, when I, after I went diamond, I had to rebuild like emeralds three or four times and it was like, Oh, but they're all coded. So I was making almost double paychecks. Even yes. though I just felt like where why I'm I'm treading water, um, you know. But and I think you know charts are amazing and it's such an amazing tool to have. But 
so many people can get so caught up in a chart and forget to just actually enroll and do the, do the, do the steps. So, um, like when you are teaching your team, like, is this the journal, like the, the book, all this work, the workbook, all the stuff that's coming out, is this almost just like a training with Denise Walsh <laughs> during like with the, with the journal and what was your like vision for doing that? Yeah. So the, the workbook, it's going to be called design your dream life is like the big work, big book. And that's the, that's like the big thing. Um, that will take you on the full journey, but the, the, and I've done the workbook content twice with my team webinar form. So we did like, like usually throughout this type of time of year, we would do four to six weeks of going through this content. And what's cool on Zoom, if you've never used it, is you can do breakout sessions. So I was able to lead and ask a question and then have them break into groups of four and work through things and then come back. So that was really special. So I've done that several times with the group. It's also, yeah, I mean like the leadership coaching that we did, like the the leadership calls I did with um, those girls back in 2010 crazy. A lot of it has stemmed from taking people on a journey. And, and it's probably my psychology background. It's probably, you know, the groups I used to lead, but it was like, all right, new distributors start here. How can I take them on a journey to there and not be mad that they're still here, but like really help them to become self-aware and take steps on their own and stay motivated and light their own internal fire. Right? So the journal does a few things. The journal is your everyday focus and it, it's every page is intentional. So you've got your quote. Yay. Quote. So this first day thoughts become words, words become actions, actions become habits, habits become your destiny. And then there's a morning prayer and then there's eyes wide open. So the eyes wide open section you know, you might not have a million things to put in there every day, but it at least opens your space, like your mind to say, what's working? Like, where was, did God show up for me? Like today, I went to a networking event and I got two contacts, three contacts, and I came home and I immediately put, like friended them on Facebook and, you know, you just never know who you're going to meet. So like, who, what's happening that's going well? And then every day there's a different gratitude game. And these are pretty fun. Like they're different every day. Sometimes they have to do with um, relationships. Sometimes they have to do with your future and like, what do you hope and what do you want? And sometimes they have to do with your past and um, thinking about what you love about your past and how you've been shaped and things like that. But the reason for this part is just to open our eyes and lift our energy up to be in a space of gratitude and love because we know like attracts like. And yet, I mean, you can think about the energy in a room when you're at a funeral versus a birthday party, right? It's different. And your energetic, like, you know, if you're walking down the hall or the road with your eyes down and you're all like hunched over, you're not going to make friends. But if you're up and you're excited and you've just got that positive vibe, like people are going to be attracted to you. So that's the first part is raising our, our energy level, raising our heart level so that we're hearing what the Holy Spirit is saying. And then there's a space for being, because again, this is the question people ask me all the time. What do you do? 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 But the, the problem with that question is that if you aren't the right who, what you do doesn't matter. So I can give two scripts to the same people and it, they're going to get different results based on their confidence level, based on their belief, based on like, are they somebody people want to follow? Are they casting confidence out there? So this space, prayer, meditation, and journaling is just a space to quiet our thoughts, like quiet our mind, quiet our heart, listen, and be. So in the prayer section, I write things that I want. Like I wrote when I was doing this, the, um, when I got like one of the author copies of the original version that we had to redo, I was doing this and I was like, I want full healing. Like I want to be fully, I don't want any strings attached. And so I would say like, I'm great. Like I'm praying for victory. And I wouldn't use this space to talk about the hurt. I use this space to talk about the victory. And then meditation. Meditation is again, I use um, Headspace for that. It's an app. If I'm busy and I don't have a ton of time, I'll just like take 10 deep breaths. It doesn't have to be anything crazy, but it really is just space. 
Like, just like, let's just listen. And, um, and then reflection is journaling, like what's going on, how you doing, that kind of thing. So we give a space for B and then we have a space for doing. So this page says, Dream life goal, affirmation, and visualization. This, you guys, is where your personal vision is grown. So dream life goal is your kind of big goal. Maybe your yearly goal, your 90-day goal, your goal, right? And you want it to be as specific as possible because the, like, like someday um, – your subconscious can't hear someday, you know, someday doesn't just like your the subconscious can't hear the word no or don't. So you don't want to say, I don't have debt because all the subconscious hears is debt. So you want to say it positively, like what is it that you want? And then you write your affirmations and you kind of have a picture in your mind of what it looks like when this is done. Like, what does it look like? What does it feel like when, when you are that? This is personal vision. This is when you light your own fire. This is when you get up out of bed because you're so stinking excited about where you're going because you see yourself three steps ahead of where you are now. Now, people would ask me, does my goal stay the same every day? Do my affirmations stay the same every day? Does my visualization stay, every, stay the same every day? And the answer to that is, yeah, at least for 30 days, if not 90 days. Because what we're doing here is we are retraining your brain. We're retraining those, those thought patterns, right? So instead of going like 98 or 76 and like living there, I'm going, what do I want? I'm living here and I believe it. It's taking it from the head to the heart. You know, I am um, a triple black diamond. I am. And you start to really begin to embody it. Now, once you own it and you've like hit those goals or you can evolve it, Sometimes I, I write stuff, something that's a little bit different, but the gist is typically the same because you're, you're not only creating new thought patterns, but you're also shifting your identity. You're shifting because when you shift your belief in who you are, you're shifting your identity and that's not easy and it takes repetition and it takes learning for your, for your body to understand that because it's, you're like, you want to stay the same, but you don't, you know what I mean? It's like you want to grow, but you're sometimes you're like, I don't know if I want to do that. And that's when we self-sabotage. That's when we procrastinate. That's when we, because we don't really believe what we can. So it's, it's all on purpose. Just know that. So affirmations, visualization, this is when you have your, you create your own personal vision. And then we get into what do I do? Action, relationship, and health. So the dream life goal action items are not things that are on your home to-do list. They're not picking the kids up from school. They're not doing dishes or laundry. They're really only things that are going to take you for your goal. Now, I did not make this a network marketing product. This is a personal development product that's for anybody. But I am lived in the It Works world for a decade. So I did it with It Works lingo in mind. And so it's like, what does it take for, like, what's one thing that I can do today that's going to take me in the direction of my goal? One thing. And it's got to be small enough that I can check it off. So again, I learned this by creating workshops and like being like, I'm working on my workshop every day for 30 days. Like, no, no, what part of it? <laughs> so like break it down. You know, an ambassador takes a year of creating momentum. What are you going to do today that's going to take you? Because that's the consistency over time that creates momentum. So sometimes you're going to feel like it's a turtle. Like you don't feel the shifts immediately, but eventually it's like all this stuff is brewing underneath and you're going to pop up. It's like all of a sudden it goes from turtle to cheetah speed <laughs> and, and you start to really see a change in your physical world and then I did put health and relationships because two reasons number one we want to be well-rounded um, I do believe that you can live a dream 10 life in all areas of life but you do have to pick one to really focus in and hone on in in order to see a change in that area but we do want to be well-rounded so relationships and health are like a balanced life right um, with health I think this is interesting. When I was doing the bodybuilding competition, if I had a clear set number in my mind of what I wanted to weigh in that next week, I would hit it. And if I didn't, I wouldn't. Like, it's just so interesting when we intentionally decide what it is we're looking for, we almost always get it. Even if it's not immediately, we will get there if we stay focused on it. So 
Um, so they have a journal is your daily morning routine. It keeps you intentional, focused, creating that personal vision and knowing where you're going. Sorry, I was trying to unmute myself. I love um, having a journal. And I think um, for me, I'm like one of those people where I'm like, I love, like, I'm like, I have a lot of red in me, but I'm also really blue. So I'm like, yes, oh my gosh, this is, this feels really good, right? Like, I'm so excited. And then like, when I'm get to the middle of it, and it's not like exciting anymore, and I'm not necessarily like, at my goal yet, and it's still kind of far away. It's like that middle part. That's where I can become very inconsistent. Um, and I think that a lot of people are guilty of it. And this happens on a smaller scale. You guys, if you're one of those people, I always say, are you a Monday, Monday morning distributor where Monday morning you're going to wake up and be like, I'm doing it this week. And then it gets a little bit hard. And by Wednesday, you're not doing anything. And it's the same thing with almost every aspect. You guys might feel so inspired after this zoom, but it's like, it feels so good. And then tomorrow when the actual work has to be put in in the morning and life happens and the busyness happens, like it's hard. Like, and I love that. Like you were telling us about like all like the struggles that it went, that you went through and it's made you appreciate it so much more and appreciate like, Oh my God, it's, it's getting published. Like I see it. Um, and being able to look back and reflect on how that journey happened. Um, because I felt that way. I, I've always told people, I know what it's like to quit. I want to know what it's like when I don't. Yeah. And so kind of, one of my favorite sayings right now. I'm like, I want to see what happens if I just keep going, you know, like I want to see what magic can be. Cause to be honest, it would be easier to not do this stuff. Like I don't have to, um, it'd be easier not to, but when you feel that stirring inside, I've learned just to trust my intuition. I've learned to, um, to say yes to that. And, and I don't get it. I don't know if it'll go anywhere or if, 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 if it'll just help us and that's cool, but I've learned to say yes. And even if I'm like crying and if it's not easy and I want to like one time, two quick stories about me wanting to give up just on this journey. One time I was like, <sighs> like I've wait. I mean that first designer was $15,000 and I have to redo it. Like that keeps me up at night. You know what I mean? Like that's like, ugh. I have my own guilt about that. You know, things like that, that are just like, this is not right. Yeah. So anyway, I was having that, that day when I realized I had to do it again. Um, I was in tears after a phone call and Eli was home and my son, he was, I don't know why he wasn't in school. He either was sick or he had, to, I don't know, but he wasn't in school. Miss Chrissy, I bet was sick. I bet our nanny wasn't there. So I had to take him to a meeting and he said to me, why are you, why are you sad? And I was like, oh, I'm just working really hard on a project and it's not working, you know? And we go to this meeting and, um, prior to like that day I had said, all right, God, I need some signs. Like, should I keep like, seriously, like I need some you're telling me yes, but it's not working. So tell me. <laughs> so um, a key has been something that has been like uh, in my heart for a while. So I, so I was like, all right, a key. I want to see a key. Show me a key. And I happened to find a key necklace that I was given by a team member a year ago in my closet. So I put this key necklace on and I'm like, I'm wearing this freaking key until a book comes out. So I go to this meeting and Eli, who has never once touched any of my necklaces, and I'm always wearing it, a necklace, goes, what's this, mom? And breaks it. And then I was like, what does that mean? Oh my gosh. Like, <laughs> so I'm, you know, in my emotion and, um, and, and my birthday was the next week. So Brandon says to the boys, what do you want to get mom for her birthday? And Eli says a key necklace. So Eli, who's not, he's four, he doesn't get Brandon anything cool for Father's Day, you know, he said a key necklace. So Brandon drove all around Grand Rapids, found me a key necklace and gave it to me for my birthday. And I realized I just got a key necklace that means even more. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> so just little things like, I mean, it's like, it was oh like, my gosh. it was literally like, Whoa, that designer broke just like the necklace and you got a new and better one, just like your book. Yes. 
See, right when we're about to give up, we get something even better. Mm. My gosh, that's so crazy. Okay, what's the next story? I feel like I'm watching a Netflix documentary. <laughs> well, the next story is, again, I was like, oh my gosh, should I just like call leads all day? Like, should I keep doing <laughs> Should I try this? And um, I had a dream. And I had a dream that I walked into a room and it wasn't a stadium. It wasn't anything crazy, but there were people there. And in my dream, I said, I almost gave up. And if I had given up, you wouldn't be here right now. And, I, and then I was just like, okay, like I've got to, every time I asked for confirmation, I got something that was like, just keep going, just keep going. And, and the same was with our business. You know, when, when I, it took us a year to go diamond, another year to go double, we didn't see the fruit of all the things we were doing immediately, but we stayed the course consistently and all these things were brewing underneath. And I just, um, you know, I'm like, I know how to create momentum now. And I'm just going to have like, you just head down buried and, and you're loving every, you know, your, your emotions are in it and you're excited about it and crazy things can happen. I love that. Okay. Um, I have so many more questions, but I'm going to, I'm going to make this the last one. Who do you recommend do the dream life? The journal. Who do you recommend? Like, who is it for? Like, good question. Because I, I think it can be like, oh, everybody's buying it. Let me buy it. Right. Like it can be one of those things, but, um, I want, I want people to, to, to purchase it with the intention of doing it every day. Right. Like, like, cause I mean, I'm, I'm so guilty. Like I'm doing, um, Cindy's Christmas devotional with my team this year because I was like, Oh my God, it sounds so cool last year. And I, and I did not do it consistently. And so this year I was like, I need some accountability. So I'm just opened it up to my team. So those are the things like I, I want, because I'm, I'm, I'm guilty of like buying a lot of books and being like, this is cool. But like, I want you to just like tell people on here, like, who is this for? Yeah. So I think that it, it takes, I would expect it to take 15 to 30 minutes of your day, whether it's in the morning or at night. It's really for anybody who is ready to level up. Um, you're ready to create a new personal vision for yourself and you want some guidance to do so. I've been doing this on a notebook for years and to have something that can take me on a journey uh, like that's not a piece of paper <laughs> that actually can prompt me and give me ideas, the gratitude games and stuff like that. It really is a game changer and you will feel your emotions shift because you may know what you want. You may have big dreams. You may want to get out of debt. You may want to go diamond. You may want, but we've got to shift our emotions to being that person before we'll see it in physical reality. And, and if that's, if you, if you ever wondered why is it not working? Why do I keep hitting these roadblocks? Why, like, is this really for me? That kind of stuff. Then this is for you. Um, because the goal of this is to help you create your own personal vision strong enough that the how figures itself out. Yeah. I love that. And I, and I think too, that like, it's cool because I, I, I can see myself at different points where I would, I needed this in the past, but also where I will need it in the future. Right. Because yeah. when you accomplish goals, it's next. Okay. What's next? Okay. What's next? And it's not that the greediness comes in, but God's calling for you gets bigger because he can trust you with so much more. I have um, a really low tolerance for boredom. So, <laughs> all right. Monotony is like my worst enemy. I'm like, monotony is like the worst word in the dictionary. Yeah. So yeah, no. Um, somebody asked, where can we buy it from? So one thing to know is because I'm doing several team Zooms, I mean, this is a really great time to talk about vision because we're going into the new year. We reflect on where we have been and we really say, all right, at this time next year, where do I want to be? That starts now, right? Every single day, it's a 1% shift, but that'll take us in a completely different direction. So I'm doing these Zooms right now. And um, so on Monday, on Monday, it, you can go to dreamlifetoolkit.com. And it's going to be on sale for $10. So you can get some for your teams. Um, so it's only on one day. It's only, it's only on Monday. And I'm trying to, 
So you can go directly to Amazon. It's totally right on Amazon. Dream Life, Denise Walsh, you'll find it. Um, but I'm saying dreamlifetoolkit.com because when you go to that spot and you press Dream Life Journal, it'll take you to Amazon, but there's an opt-in where it will send you a list of affirmations. And the affirmation list is, um, the affirmation section is a piece where people sometimes get stuck because they're like, I don't know what to say here. So the affirmation list is pretty cool. And there's also a life purpose meditation in there that um, there's like two bonuses that you get when you put your email in. So you can go directly to Amazon. That's totally fine. But Dream Life Toolkit gives you those two bonuses. I'm mad that I didn't. So put, set your alarms. Now, I'm not allowed to post on Lifer's page. I can't um, post in works groups. I just have to be careful about that because it's kind of a, it's a personal thing. Uh, so I'm just going to email you or message you, Kelsey, on Monday to, so, so you can remind people. <laughs> yes, I will. I will. I will. I will for sure. Well, I just wanted to let you know how much I appreciate you getting on and taking the time to talk with us tonight. Um, I know you're busy and I am so proud of you for publishing this and just like your stick to And I know that it hasn't been easy, but I appreciate your vulnerability because it has taught so many people, including me, so many lessons. Um, and knowing that you're just like a real person, you know, like everybody has these struggles and it comes with so much greatness on the other side of it, you know, and, and the blessing is just on the other side. So I appreciate you for just being an awesome example for all of us and for hopping on here tonight. Absolutely. Megan just asked if I can talk about the, um, event in January, cause oh, I'm yeah. doing my first event. So the thing is, is, um, I've done this. So yeah, I'm doing my first like personal development. It's not at works. Um, we're not wearing at work stuff because there's people that are not at works coming. Like I've got teacher friends coming and, um, other company, like other distributors from other companies in the area. It's like a, just a personal development event. So it's not like and it works event. Um, but it's all the Jack stuff that I've learned and it's exercise. If you've ever been to the Emerald and diamond training this past year, they were corporate gave me 20 minutes to do some stuff there. So we are going to, we're going to do some really cool things. Sarah Rankin is coming and she's going to introduce me and she's got a cool way to start the day. Carla Burns is coming and she has just been invited to do a Ted talk and she's going to practice on us. So oh my gosh, that's so exciting. And, and so we're going to do a few things. Like we're going we're gonna to do your life purpose statement. Like a lot of it is teaching and then doing. Because we all know what to do. We just don't do it. Which is why all of my stuff is so interactive. Because I'm like, do it now. Um, so they we're going to do your life purpose statement. We're going to really like dive into the self-awareness part. We're going to also let go of guilt, resentment, those emotional strings, because I really learned this year. That's like my big lesson this year is how those, those invisible strings can hold us back. Even if we don't want them to, like we've really got to release and forgive and all of that. So we're going to have a section for that. And then we're also going to have a section for dreaming and your what's next and your inspired action plan. And then we are ending with a come as you will be party. So from about 4.30 to 7, we are going to have a 2024, so five years, 10 years was a lot for people. So five years, <laughs> uh, come as you'll be party. So I'm going to prep people before, like in the next two weeks, um, how to come prepared for that. So you're going to bring stuff and just leave it in your car. Probably it's at a beautiful um, country club and change in the bathrooms and kind of get ready for the come as you'll be party and come back into the room for heavy hors d'oeuvres and cash bar and 90s music so oh my god so yeah that's on and that's at dreamlifetoolkit.com too yes i'm so excited i'm so excited and with jets january what is it january so it's january 13th which is a sunday and the reason we did that is because i expected this to be a local event and we normally do boot camps on sundays but the first person who bought tickets was from florida and i was like oh. um grand rapids it's in grand rapids yeah i'm really praying for dusty, no snowing, like beautiful winter day. <laughs> yes. The travel's easy for everybody. Yes. 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 Oh my gosh. I'm so excited. Well, I appreciate you and thank you everybody for hanging on here. Um, and Denise, we're so excited for you. I can't wait to read it Yay. and dive into it and give you feedback on how it's helping. Awesome. Yes, totally do. Let me know. And, um, any ideas you have?